Hello everyone and welcome back to my course on Microsoft Teams. We're down in section two where we're looking at how to create and manage teams. And in the previous module we saw how you can create a team in three different ways. In this module I want to show you how you can join an existing team that you didn't create and also how join requests are handled. So if somebody requests to join a team that you've created, where you go to see those requests and how you accept them. Now, if you recall, we created this Friday drinks crew team, and this was based off of an Office 365 group. And the members of this team are all people who were members of the Office 365 group. And this is a private group, so anybody who wants to join this group is going to need to request access. So it might be that I want to invite Adam to the Friday Drinks Crew private group. So what I essentially did was I clicked the three dots and I selected the Get Link to Team option. So this gives me a direct link to this team. I copied it and then I pasted it into an email and I sent it to Adam. So as soon as Adam received that email, he clicks on the link, it asks him to join the group and then it tells him that his request is pending because I need to go and approve this request because it is a private group. So where do all of these pending requests live? Well, again, if we click on the three dots and jump to manage team, You'll see running across the top, you have a section for pending requests. And you can see there is Adam waiting patiently for me to either accept or deny his request. So I'm going to say accept. And he's now been added as a team member into this particular team. So pretty simple to accept requests. Now, another way that you can get people to join your team is by generating a team code. Now, we're going to stay in this screen and we're going to jump across to settings. And you'll see that there is an option here for team code. And it says share this code so people can join the team directly and you won't get any join requests. So whoever you send the team code to, they can join the team using the code. And it just means that you're not getting loads and loads of requests come into pending, which you then have to go in and check and approve or deny. So in order to generate a code for any of your teams, if you click on settings, expand team code and click the generate button. And you can see there, there we go. I could then copy that to my clipboard, jump across to my mail, and compose a new message with the team code. And then essentially they can use that code to join the group. So now let's look at this in reverse. I'm back in my Outlook email and I can see that Adam has sent me a code to join the customer service group that he's created. So I'm going to double click and copy that code, control C. I'm going to go back to teams and I'm going to click on the join or create a team link. And you can see here, the first thing we have is join a team with a code. I'm going to click and I'm going to paste that code in and I'm going to say join team. And there we go. You can now see that the customer service team has been added to my teams list. Now remember, if the group is public, then you won't need a code or to request to join. And if it's organizational wide, then you will automatically be a member of that group. So it's only really private groups that you need to request to join. Hopefully that's cleared that up. That's it for this module. I will see you in the next one. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.